Alright, you already know, how could I go without making a video on Beyond Meat earnings? You know me and my history with Beyond Meat, okay? Thing was up 5% in the normal trading session, up 4.5% after hours. So, it must have been a decent looking earnings, right? I mean, this is a stock, obviously, year to date. That's right. Um, the stock's up year to date. Uh, crazy. You may think that's uh, that's wild, that this stock's up year to date, but up around 32% year to date. That's crazy. But we trade in an irrational stock market, okay? There's no doubt about it. Um, let's take a look at these earnings and see what is going on with Beyond Meat. Well, maybe that's justifiable that we saw some upward movement from Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat beats, on an EPS standpoint, gap EPS of $0.03. Cents. Not even non-gap. That's legitimate profitability from this company. Beat by $0.09. Cents. That is massive for this company. Gosh, this was an unprofitable mess, to be honest. Um, that's super exciting uh, if you're a shareholder of this stock because they weren't expected to see profitability. It's a complete surprise. Uh, revenue up 141.4% year-over-year. Beats by $9.97 million. So big, big revenue, too. Beat. Big revenue beating uh, in terms of that. That's awesome. Very good growth year-over-year. Um Beyond Meat reports revenue jumped 141 um, percent. Uh, growth in volume sold was driven mainly by expansion in the number of distribution points, both domestically and abroad. Higher sales velocities at existing retail customers and uh, contribution from new products introduced over the year. Gross profits soared to 38.8 percent of sales versus 26.8 uh, as the extra sales leverage kicked in. That's massive, honestly. Net income was, that's right, positive $1.8 million. <laughs> that's profit, baby, versus negative $76 million a year ago. That's profit. Uh, adjusted EBITDA arrived at uh, $12.7 million versus negative $2.1 million last year. But Beyond Meat does suspend guidance, which makes plenty of sense. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can think about this for this company. Uh, from my perspective, I think there's a lot of negatives headed to this company. Unfortunately, I think sales growth will slow significantly because of this. Uh, if we look at some of the major fast food chains that are just absolutely um, declining in terms of revenue, I mean, we're seeing pretty big declines in terms of demand for these fast food stocks uh, or these fast food companies, and that's where a good chunk of the revenue is coming from. Other than that, if we talk about in the grocery store, a Beyond Burger, I'm sorry, it's more expensive than normal beef. If it's the only thing out there, though, people will buy it. Uh, that's one thing where they have to benefit. It's hard to get beef right now in a lot of places. But if we're talking about price-wise, if we're in recession-type environments in which um, a lot of people have lost their jobs, they probably won't be able to splurge and get the Beyond Burger. I just got to be 100% honest with you. They won't get the Beyond Chicken. They won't get any of the Beyond products because they're more expensive than your traditional meat. It just is. Um, so this is a company not well, well suited for this recession-type environment we're about to head into. Now, I think they can still do a great job in terms of selling to uh, fast food chains. I think they still have a good opportunity in that. But as far as their retail segment is concerned, I think they could certainly be hit pretty bad in this. Um, and that means profitability will get hit as well. But let's take a look. Uh, at what they have going on here in the second California El Segundo as you see um, so gross profit was 37.7 million wild stuff you like to see that you like to see that um, that's just very good very good for them actually so as, as far as the revenue breakdown um, <clears throat> retail made up 49 million of that um, just so you know 49 million of that made up in retail. And what scares me is I don't necessarily know what that looks like next quarter for them. I don't. Uh, again, as I mentioned, recession-type environments, they seek to benefit because they might be the only provider of meat-like products. Uh, sometimes because a lot of people are out. But if we talk recession-type environments, people aren't going to really be paying for that Beyond Burger. It's not. It's For the most part, they're not going to. Um, so I don't know... Obviously, I think they'll see a rise, but I see. I think you'll see overall um, they're going to get hit pretty hard in terms of uh, how fast they were rising. It's going to slow down quite a bit. Uh, but in food service, that makes it 22 million. 
156% year-over-year change. Um, ah, you know, it's hard for me to say. Food service, they could definitely benefit on, but it's it's going to be a difficult one to say. And that's in the U.S. Uh, internationally, you saw a 106% in total revenue. Uh, retail was just obviously massive growth because they weren't really selling it in-store before uh, internationally. So now they started that, it's pretty big. Um, so we'll get into look that. Um, <clears throat> nothing really major to mention here besides uh, ideally look at this balance sheet because they mentioned the balance sheet in here. There wasn't much to really cover on this company because th they mentioned a lot. It's all boring verbiage. They're consistent stuff. Uh, overall, if we're looking, um, current assets on this company, cash and cash equivalents of $246 million. Pretty good for a company of this size. I mean, this is a company with not much going on for it. Uh, I mean, you think about a company making $100 hundred million in revenue in a quarter to have this much cash is not bad. Uh, total current assets of four hundred fifteen billion versus the four hundred thirty billion. Um, if we're talking about last quarter, so good growth there. Honestly, um, total assets of four hundred ninety one billion versus uh, four fifty one billion uh, last quarter. Not bad. And from a total current liabilities, honestly, all things considered, not bad. Um, total current liabilities of 71 uh, million, which has increased quite a bit year over year, or, or in the past quarter, has increased quite a bit. Total long total long term liabilities though, of only 27 million, not bad. Um, yeah, that's not bad by any means. This company's doing a lot of good things. Uh, stockholder equity is very positive there. I mean, they have a lot more assets than they do liabilities right now, and if they can maintain a chain of profitability. There's a lot of good things coming for this company. The only issue, though, is when you look at the valuation of this stock, right? This is a company trading in a market cap of over $6 billion, right? But they make 400, uh, well, they make 300 million in a year. And they're trading at a market cap of $6 billion, plus a very small amount of profitability that they weren't even expected to have. I, the valuation just does not, it's not feasible on this. I, I just got to be honest. It makes no sense how this company's valued right now. And I guess they're hyped about the future growth. But I cannot advise buying into this stock because of the fact that this valuation is so absurd. I mean, I, I, am I the only one seeing that market cap versus, <laughs> I mean, come on now. It's a little bit, a little bit absurd that these shares are trading in a market cap, $6.2 billion. When you're only making 300 million in revenue in a year, but you know what? To each their own. There's growth with this company. If you're invested in it and you see the plan with it, I understand. Uh, I'm not going to be, you know, upset at you. But I personally will not touch the stock because I don't know what the value is besides speculative. So uh, I already have speculative stocks in my portfolio. So this one, I'm sorry, I'm not giving you a chance.